Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome back to Sustainable Work. I have my friend David McGlennon with me here today, which is very exciting. Yeah. Uh, so David is a business growth guide who helps leaders learn to play the infinite game of business. He shows leaders how to integrate their desire for high performance achievement and growth while focusing on the things they value most. As an entrepreneur and family business owner for most of his life, he's made the mistakes and yet loves getting out of his comfort zone to learn and grow. He's coached and trained leaders around the world as far north as the Arctic Circle. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I want to hear about that. Sure. And, uh, shared the stage with John C. Maxwell while training leaders in Paraguay, South America. He's been married for 32 years and is a father of five children living in Pittsburgh region. And he's also a recovering triathlete and loves <laughs> active and healthy lifestyle. And uh, David also is the president of Impact Leadership Consult. Yep, yep, yep. Great. So welcome, David. Um, Thank you. Um, yes. Yeah, I'm... <laughs> you, uh, sorry, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be here and I'm uh, grateful to be in the, in the summit and really, uh, just honored because uh, I think uh, what you, you know what you're doing with the summit is is an amazing thing and I really uh, align with its purpose and so um, yeah I, I mean I, I'm I'm a business owner uh, business leader I've been in in uh, my own businesses for uh, quite some time I was uh, in the insurance industry for most of my career uh, and then uh, spent a little bit of time in the technology and and uh, uh, insurance space uh, for for a few years in a startup company and uh, started my company about five and a half years ago. And really one of the things that I am um, really focused on with my company is helping, helping companies grow, but, but really with the, the sight of people over profits, because I really think that focusing on our people will help our companies grow, but it'll also help us to all really enjoy our work and really be fulfilled. And so um, that's really been my focus over the last five and a half years. So I'm, I'm just really excited to be here and, and uh, sh share with you and, and, and your audience. Perfect, yes. So, okay, let's start with that. <clears throat> uh, how do you define sustainable work? Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I define sustainable work as as work that is not only fulfilling and energizing, but it's really integrated within our, our entire life. You know, I, I know a lot of people talk about work-life balance and, and the, the reality is, is that there, I don't think that there's such a thing as balance. I really think it's integration. I mean, you know, as we're recording this, I mean, we're, you know, we're on a Saturday morning and, you know, I've got uh, family things going on, but I'm integrating my work into my day. And so it's just part, it's, it's part of who I am. And so I think that having a sustainable workplace is to be able to help people to integrate their work within their lives. And so it just becomes the fabric. I, I think of, of, of a sustainable work as really kind of a fabric and being able to kind of just make it all come together. And so um, I don't know if that's super clear or not, but I mean, that's how I view sustainable sustainability and work. Absolutely. So <clears throat> Have you always related to your work this way? Has it all mm. been like integrated into your life or did you <laughs> come to it eventually? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. And it's, it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of chuckling inside because no, I, I mean, I, I was, I, I have been probably for the last, up until probably about six years ago. Um, I, I was just I, I'm super focused on work. I've been a high achiever my whole life. Um, I was a partner with my dad in my early 20s. And, and really then from there, I kind of just like focused on work. And then, of course, I started having children. And you would think that um, when you have children, you know, you start to focus on them, which I did to a certain extent. But I have to say that, you know, um, I, I never had that focus on, on integrating my entire life. It was really more about work. And um, so I, I have to say that I was never a great, you know, work-life integrator in my earlier years. And so I really believe, though, that there was a pivotal point in my life that helped me to kind of be, begin a shift. And honestly, it was when I turned 50. <laughs> I, I turned 50, golly 
seven years ago. Uh, I'm, I'm dating myself now, but um, but it, at, at that point, I was I was at a place in my life where my kids were a bit older, and I was in a, I had been in a startup company, and I was working really hard, long hours, traveling an awful lot, and it really began to get me thinking about how can I how can I keep this pace, and how can I really do the things that matter to me the most and still have, you know, my work life. And so that began kind of a journey for me. And um, so it was, I, I really feel like it was that point that helped change um, my focus. And, and, and also I will say too, that in that um, startup company, we, we worked with companies that were wanting to focus on wellness and, and people's health and um, but, but in reality, what they were looking at was the bottom line. They were looking at how do we reduce expenses and how do we keep the, the healthcare costs of our organization, you know, the lowest that we possibly can. And, and I thought it, it, it came to me that, look, you're, you're focusing on the wrong thing. You're focusing on just the expense and not the people and not the culture of the organization. And so that really began kind of a little bit of a journey for me in, in understanding culture, understanding how we can create environments in our work to be able to help us to, to, to be sustainable and to really um, help have people thrive in the organization as well. Mm -hmm. That is great. You know, it just makes me wonder, it feels like just that you're talking about this pivotal point in your life that perhaps you realized something wasn't working for you. Yes, yeah. What was that like? What wasn't working? What was the feeling? Yeah, you know, it was really a feeling of being torn. I, I honestly, it was being torn because my kids were growing older. And, and, and I'll tell you, so a quick story. I was, I was on an airplane. Um, I, was on, I was coming home from a business uh, trip and um, landed at um, LaGuardia. And um, I, I was sitting there waiting for my next flight coming back home to Pittsburgh. And um, there was a, a delay and it was a maintenance delay. And I thought, OK, well, I'm, I'm, I'm early enough. You know, I still I was coming home to see my son play in a, uh, a concert. He uh, he's a professional musician now, but he was he, he was a player uh, in his jazz uh, ensemble at, at school. And so I was coming home to, to see him. And, you know, there was this delay. And so there's this thing within me that's like, oh gosh, I don't want to miss this. Hopefully this is not too long. Kind of a long story short, we, we got, you know, got going. It was only about a half an hour um, delay in getting, you know, off um, to, to the, the flight off. Well, as we're taxiing out, um, as you can imagine in LaGuardia, if you've, if you've, anybody has flown through LaGuardia, if there's any kind of a delay, man, you just get stacked up. And so the pilot came on and said, hey, sit back, relax. You know, we're, we're about an hour away from uh, takeoff. We're 34th in line to, and I'm like, oh my gosh. And, you know, so it was one of those things where I looked at my watch and I thought, oh man, this is going to be close. And long story short, uh, you know, I missed the, the first half of uh, the, the concert, but I got to the concert but it was at that moment where I felt like I was just being torn apart, you know, and, and I just hated that feeling and I knew something had to change. And so for me, it was, how do I, how do I not have that tearing apart feeling? Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much for sharing. And you know what, what it sounds like to me that um, like work is important but this is also important. Right. And I want to have it all. Exactly. How can I make this work? Yes, exactly. Yeah, and, and I think that one of the things that I began to learn at that point or after that point is what do I need to say no to? And mm -hmm. there are things that I have to say no to. And, you know, frankly, some of them were business trips. And some, so, and, and ultimately it was saying no to being a part of that organization because I really needed to be my own boss. And I really knew that there, that I was designed to be able to help companies mm. to help their people not feel that tearing apart and to be able to, to really integrate it, uh, integrate it all. And so it, uh, for me, it's, it's knowing what to say no to and what to say yes to. Mm. And that really takes an awful lot of self-discovery. So I, I'll, I, I mean, I, I, I'm continuing on the journey. It's, it's been five and a half years in, in, as my own, uh, with my own company. And um, I'm still learning, still learning how to say yes, how to say no. And uh, it's just a constant, constant journey, but, uh, but it's an exciting one. It's a fun one. 
Yes. So yes, now tell us a little bit more about your company. What is that that you do right now? Yeah. Yeah. So I work with companies who, who want to be very intentional with their culture. And in order to be very intentional with their culture, they have to have some kind of a system or systematic approach. And so um, I help companies create the what, what I call the fundamentals or the fundamentals of their success. And, and they're really essentially behaviors. And so um, I, 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 I help them to be able to facilitate those, those behaviors and, and come up with them, um, write them down, uh, and, but then practice them because so many companies uh, work on their mission and their vision and their values. They put them on the wall of their office and that's as far as they get. Mm -hmm. But what I do is I help companies create habits to practice their, their behaviors. So, mm -hmm. so, you know, just because they have a, a behavior or a fundamental that says, Hey, we practice blameless problem solving. How do we do that? But well, we have to find a way to be able to talk about it, have to uh, put it top of mind all the time. And so I create rituals within an organization to be able to do that. And, and, and then from there, what's, what's been kind of fun is, and this has really been an evolution in my business, is that from there then, I get to work with the not only the executive leadership team, but I'll, I'll call it the next level leadership team. I uh, through a, a, an, uh, a program I call the Emerging Leader Inner Circles, and um, so I work with the emerging leaders to help them to be able to put into practice the, the the fundamentals that the organization has put together, and really help them to become better leaders as well. So um, I'm just thrilled to be able to do what I do and, and um, help companies to be able to grow. And, and that's really at the end of the day, it's helping them to realize that they can grow and, and they can grow their profits, but it doesn't have to be at the expense of their people. Mm -hmm. You know, it just makes me, brings me back to what you were saying earlier about the company you were working for before you started your own business that yeah. was uh, focusing on wellness, but wasn't really. So it makes me wonder, what did you see there that led you to understand the importance of um, focusing on the people? Like, what was that thing? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it was, um, that's a good question, Maria. I, I think what I saw there was, was this this out of balance, you know, we, you know, I talk about out of balance or, you know, balancing is it's really just that focus on um, business and, you know, and, and, and more and more and more and, and, and wanting more, nothing wrong. I don't think with wanting more and being more, but it was at the expense of people's well-being and people's um, I mean, there was a lot of talk um, in many companies that I worked with at that company about wanting to have a, a culture of, of wellness, a culture of well-being, but it was talk and it wasn't really putting it into practice. And so I think that's where I, I, I felt like there was like this disconnect. And I think that's really what I saw. There's this disconnect between, you know, wanting people to be healthy and, and, and feeling well at work and so that they could be productive, but it was just talk and not really putting it into action. That's, that's kind of what I think I, I saw at that time. Yeah, that makes total sense. And you know, now that I've heard you talk about what you do in business, it totally aligns for me that, you know, you, at your previous company, you saw these people talking about one thing, right? And, but not having the behaviors. Right. right. And now you're like, okay, you're talking about this thing. Let me help you. <laughs> yes. Let me let connect me it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So how do you start? Like you come into the company and what do you start with? Like what's yeah. the thing? Yeah, the first thing I start with really is uh, coming up with the behaviors. What I, I really help the, the senior leadership team to be able to, to, to really understand what is good, what are the behaviors that are going to drive our success? What, what does that look like? And so um, I, I really ask them a lot of questions and, and things like, um, Tell me a tell me a, a person that you'd like to clone. You know, you've got one person at least, or a couple of them in your in your company that you think, oh man, if we had you know 150 of Maria's, man, this place would be just be rocking. And 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 so I, I get them to picture that person in their mind, 
And then I say, you know, what do they do? Like, what do you see them do that just makes them special that you really want to have more of them? And, um, you know, they'll, they'll describe certain things, but I try to get down then to the behaviors. So I start with the behaviors of, you know, well, Maria, man, she's a fanatic about response time. Ah, oh, how about, you know, that's, that could be one of the, your, your behaviors. Mm -hmm. um, she's really great at practicing blameless problem solving, or she really speaks straight. She, she really talks um, in, in language that helps us to move the, the situations forward, move towards our goals whatever those behaviors are, I start with those. And so I facilitate that from the leadership team to be able to understand what's really going to be helping them to be successful um, in their mission. And we start with that. And then we, we begin to look at the, their workflow and, and, and what is it that we can implement to help them to practice those behaviors. Once we get them all um, articulated and, and, and whittled down to the most essential ones, what is it going to take to be able to, to practice these? And so to give you an example, one of the, one of the ritual, I call them a ritual, but one of the practices that we do is we usually have uh, the leader, it starts with the leader, it could be the CEO, the president, or the business owner, um, send out a weekly email about the behavior of the week. So we, we focus on a fundamental of the week. And, and all that week, uh, we're going to take just one of those behaviors that we've articulated and, and focus on it. So whether that, let's say it's uh, getting clear on expectations, um, every meeting that we're, that we're in that week, we're going to start that meeting with a short, maybe two minute discussion of uh, what does it, you know, what does it mean to get clear on expectations? Um, you know, hey, Maria, what do you think? You know, and just have like this quick discussion about getting clear on expectations and then flow right into the meeting. But, but then it, it, and if you think about how many meetings we have in a week, in a day, um, we're going to be talking about that an awful lot. And so we cycle through then. So maybe next week it's, it's, um, you know, being process oriented. Well, we talk about that for that week. Um, and the following week it's listening generously. So those, those behaviors then get talked about on a very regular and rhythmic and, and, and methodical basis. And when we do that, then it begins to create this fabric of our organizations that it becomes just the way we do things around here. And so it becomes the culture of the organization that helps to be able to sustain people and help them to be focused on their best work. Yeah. Oh my God. I love it. <laughs> yes. I absolutely love it. First of all, I love that you call them rituals, mm, right? That's yeah. when, it, when yeah. uh, you and I talked about this before, that's the word yeah. that really struck to me because for me, you know, I have my morning ritual, right? And yes. The way I start my morning and I connect with my day and things that are important to me. Yes. It's, that yes really gets me off to a good start so yeah. the fact that you are creating this rituals and organizations i think that's just totally amazing yeah yeah well i think that i think that a lot of companies have their own rituals already but they just don't realize it mm -hmm. and, and they it could be that some of the rituals that they have right now just aren't serving them but right. having a having a specific outcome in mind um, it really helps to be able to be very intentional then with, okay, this is the ritual that we're going to practice. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of companies I know, and I'm sure, uh, you know, you're familiar with the construction uh, industry. So, uh, you know, a lot of construction uh, companies and, and people that are in even manufacturing will have a startup meeting. They'll have a, a safety briefing. We just incorporate the, you know, the, the ritual of practicing the, the, uh, the fundamental of the week into that. So let's say we're going to have a, a, a you know a tool talk or a safety briefing, uh, toolbox talk. I forgot the toolbox <laughs> toolbox talk or a safety briefing. Um, we're just going to incorporate it into that. We also say, okay, well, you know, hey, let's take thirty seconds and um, talk about the fundamental of the week of, of listening generously. You know, and, and what do you think gets going to get in the way of of listening generously today? And have a brief discussion, and then go on, on the, uh, the, with the work and, uh, you don't want it to be get in the way of the work, but it's, it's just a way to be able to start kind of like your mornings, you know, your morning rituals and, and being able to prepare you for what, what's to come. And it really just kind of sets your mindset to in the right direction, very intentionally. Yeah. And, you know, I love that also that you say, like, we're doing it gradually, right? We focus just on one behavior a week yeah. because 
what I noticed is that companies try to do a lot of things in a very short time yeah. and it doesn't allow people this time to really absorb this new information and learn it and understand right yes yes exactly yeah and there's this this idea of having a rhythm and having a a, a focus on a rhythmic basis and you know a lot of times um my clients will will articulate 20 25 was, a couple of them have maybe like 30 of these behaviors so they're gonna it's gonna take them a while to go through them but uh, and, and I've got one client that said, you know, I want to have 26 behaviors because I want to get through them twice in a year. And they were very anal analytical. I'm like, okay, that's cool. It really doesn't matter the number really, but, but they, they wanted, you know, to make sure they had 26. I'm like, okay, that's cool. So, so in that particular case, they're going to go through them twice in a year's time because every week they're going to take one, you know, and, and you get to the end of the, of the, the list and you start right back over again. And so each time you learn something just a little bit deeper and a little you you, you as you um, talk about them you have different business situations that you can apply them to too and it really then too once we articulate what these behaviors are it gives us such an ability to to um, see them to, to coach them to give feedback to people and and really then to be able to help our team to be able to practice them. Yeah, and it sounds like to me there is also this process of integration happens, right? Where absolutely they get connected to all of these other different things, right? I yeah. practice in this context and in this context. And right, yeah. right. Well, and it's it's interesting you use that word integration because as part of this framework that I use for for my clients integration is actually the, the the fourth step in this process because once we once we um, define our culture in terms of the behaviors create the rituals and then the third step is selecting the right people that really fit with with those behaviors the fourth step is is integrating our people that we've hired into the organization so some people will call it onboarding or orientation I, call, I like to call it integration because again, it has this idea of, um, you know, you're part of the team now and it, it's, you, you know, you're not, you're not in the stands, you're not, you're not just a spectator, you're part of us. And it's really um, an assimilation word as opposed to, you know, pointing like, hey, orientation is like, oh, this is the way we're going. That's all good. But, but I think integration is a, a key word and a key um, uh, process that we have to use in order to help those new people that we hire to understand, hey, this is if you know you, you're on the team, and this is how we do things around here. It's kind of like taking a pair of glasses and putting the right prescription in them, and mm -hmm. saying to your people, hey, this is the way we want you to see the world. This is the way we want you to see our organization with these prescription, uh, with this prescription. And so that integration, I think, is really a key component. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, what it makes me wonder, again, something I mentioned earlier, that people, what I see, right, people, leaders in the companies sometimes get very anxious to get those results quickly. Mm -hmm. So have you experienced that in your work? Like impatience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's typically yeah. It's typically the the leaders of the organization that you know they want they want something now, and I think that it's a it's a it's it's a matter of just really helping them understand that people are a process. You know, mm -hmm. we we don't get somewhere overnight. Um, it, it, it's just. Yeah, it, it's it's matter of I think just helping them understand that it's not a it's it's not an overnight thing. It's a it's a process, and we have to be willing to help people along their own journey, and and that's really I think the beauty of a of an organization is we have all of these different people in different places, and helping them to learn and grow and and really even become aware of their own um, behaviors and their their own. Uh, potential too. And um, I see this a lot with the emerging leaders, especially because when I work with them, um, I, you know, they, they come in and they, they, you know, they're a little bit unsure, they have, they lack confidence, but, you know, over time, it, 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 they, they gain in that confidence. And so I think it's helping the leaders see that it's a process is, you know, some that's, that's usually my job is really help them to be patient and to understand that it's going to take some time. Mm -hmm. 
So what what helps you? <laughs> what helps you achieve that? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's not always easy, but I and I think that it honestly I think it takes a certain leader too to really understand that, mm-hmm. and and I think that it's it's a matter of understanding um, that every every body and every company has you know has a a um, uh, I'll call it like an incubation period. It's it's kind of mm-hmm. like uh, we have to we have to really work with the laws of nature, and 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 I think that so many organizations don't understand that. So it's just really helping helping people to see that. And, and I don't I don't even know. I think it's really more about coaching, and it's asking a lot of questions, because um, a lot of times what I do is I'll ask uh, business leaders questions to help them to be able to. Um, find out what's behind that desire. Well, you know, why is that? What's, what's, what's driving you to want this, this result, you know, tomorrow or next week? Um, what happens if it, if it's six day, six months from now or 60 days from now, what's, you know, what's the difference? So helping them think about the, the reasons behind that. I think that's probably, as I'm thinking out loud, even a little bit about my process, um, that's really a lot of what I do is it's coaching those leaders to be able to understand what's driving that. And there's, there could be a pressure, you know, maybe there's, Hey, we, you know, we have a cash flow crunch. We really need to, 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 you know, grow this, you know, our revenue or whatever the, the situation is. So maybe they're feeling the pressure, but it's helping them understand that so that, um, they can then be a little bit more patient. Yeah. Because, you know, ultimately, sustainability for me is a lot about long-term results right and exactly long-term results require patience and, and a long-term it. perspective yeah a long-term yes. perspective for sure yeah absolutely yeah yes i might want to have results tomorrow but it's just it's it's not going to happen right right yeah and it's and i think that too you know as i think about it one of the things back to an earlier question um one of the things that got me um thinking about this whole idea of maybe sustainability in work is, is a focus on short-term gains. And, and, and so many companies um, will bring in, you know, like private equity or venture capital, and they're only focused on the money. And they're only focused on the short-term, like, hey, we want to we wanna cash out in three years. We want to cash out in five years. And, you know, Simon Sinek talks about the infinite game. And so that's why I say I help companies to be able to play the infinite game of business. It's not about short term. It's not about three years. It's about or five years. It's about how do we level up next year? How do we level up next year? And, you know, for generations and and how do we make this company sustainable for generations instead of just three to five or seven years? And, And I think that that's what's missing in business today is really looking at the long game and looking at the infinite game in, in Simon Sinek's terms. So um, that's, that's really, it, and that's who's attracted to me in the first place anyway. So mm-hmm. it's, if, if there's a company that, you know, just got, you know, some private equity and all they want to do is maximize their, um, their short-term games, I'm not the person to work with. And, and, and that's not the mentality that I want to work with, but But if you're looking at a a company from a long-term perspective, then I can help sustain that. And one of the ways to do that is to build the leaders, build the emerging leaders, to be able to grow the company from the ground up and um, really help the people in it to to, to learn to grow and, and, um, and look at even their own lives as, as not just a, a short term, um, um, perspective. So, you know, so many people today look at, you know, Hey, I'm going to come to this company for one year or two years. And, and I think it's, it's, it's changing perspective of people too, to help, help them look at, Hey, maybe I'm going to come to this company because they've got a great organization. They've got a great culture. It's a great organization. And I really want to, I want to develop my career here. And not to say that somebody's going to be at a place for 30 years, that may not happen, but at the same time, they have a longer term perspective. Mm-hmm. Yes, I love it that you talk about, speak about that, about the perspective. And uh, mm. you're right. I agree with you that, uh, and I think it's changing now. The business perspective yeah. has been mostly focused on short term gain, uh, 
gain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and not only business, I think our general like societal perspective on what life is yeah. is more about now and instant gratification rather than thinking about the whole and yeah. um, what's important for the future. Yeah, right. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I think there is a shift. I really do. I feel feel like there's this shift because um, especially, you know, over the past year, uh, you know, 2020, we, we, we learned a lot of things. We learned a lot of things about how can we be um, looking at things differently. And I think that in, in a lot of ways, I feel like 2020 was a gift for us, um, you know, <laughs> Yes, a gift that we didn't want to have, but it was right, here right. regardless. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, a c- couple more questions I have. Sure, sure. Uh, I guess one is what do you see when you work with the companies? What are other than focus on the short-term gain, uh, gain, do you generally see any other um, barriers or blind spots that they have that can't, that don't allow them to uh, be a sustainable workplace? Hmm. Yeah, I love the, that you use the word blind spots because I think that um, the 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 blind spots I think that I see or that that companies um, have is it's it's really focusing it's it's a it's a focus on only uh financial gain and and i think that that can be a blind spot they may not understand that they um that they have it um and and i think the other thing too is a focus only on process I've, i've worked with some companies that are in the the manufacturing space and so Um, having built into a manufacturing process, lean processing, um, there's this focus on just process. And it's like, hey, we got to do this process. And they, they, they exclude people. They, and, and so it's, it's really, I think the blind spot is not, not, not understanding that we can bring process and people together and, and, and really, I call it having a magic in the middle. It's, it's really the, the, the merging of people and process that really um, brings, I, I think that's the blind spot, honestly. It, it's it not, it, because so many uh, manufacturing, not just manufacturing, but, but a lot of organizations only focus on process and don't understand that there's people that drive those processes. And when we bring those two things together, there's really a... a um, a magical combination or a magical um, mixing of, of those two things when we bring them together. And so, um, and, and I think that just being able to um, have a focus on a, a, almost like a, a swing to their people is really a, a key, key element uh, that many companies don't see. So we, we were talking about blind spots and I think that's the blind spot. Mm-hmm. That's, so interesting uh, that you mentioned that. And because <clears throat> I think so far we've talked a lot about, um, I guess, this ritual which helped create certain processes to me in the mm-hmm. organization. So, what does it mean to also focus on people and bring them together mm. in the process? Yeah. Well, I, I think that first uh, and foremost, so often leaders don't connect with their their people. And what I mean by that is really connect with them on a very personal level. I think there's been this myth over the period of time that we have to keep, you know, our personal lives separate. And and there's like this, you know, well, hey, it's only business. Well, not really. I mean, business is people. And so having having a separation of, of business versus personal, I think is something that a lot of leaders need to be able to bridge and you know because let's face it i mean i've got one of my clients who um they have a a key project manager who has a daughter going through um cancer treatment she i mean she's she's only four years old and she's going through cancer treatment and the first round didn't work and now they're in the second round and so how do you really help that individual i mean that's that that kind of that kind of thing ha- happens, and so how do I connect with that individual, that project manager, so that I really understand what they're going through and help them, so that they can really be 
their best for not only their family, but also then help still contribute to the organization. And, and if I don't connect with my people and I don't know that, um, I'm not going to be able to help them. And so I, th I think that really one of the key things for leaders to be able to do is to just connect with their people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's, I think if, if 2020 taught us anything, it's that it's really, we have to get back to the, the human aspect of business. And it's really connecting with heartbeat to heartbeat because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I mean, we all have stuff that we deal with. And if I don't know that about you, if you're working with me and in my organization I, and I don't know that, shame on me. You know, I really should be able to come into a, a meeting and just, you know, take the temperature of the room and say, hey, Maria, how are you doing? You know, no, seriously, how are you, you know, doing with your family and, you know, how's life for you? What's been struggling? What have you been struggling with? You know, those kinds of things are super important because it helps people to understand that to be understood, you know, and, and I think that, um, you know, a, a great leader helps people feel like they're valued. And when people are being valued, they can then give more and they'll learn to figure out things. They learn to be more creative. They, they, they're just more um, um, fulfilled, you know, I think, I think that that, that and that, that only benefits everyone, I mean, the organization and, and them personally. Yeah, thank you for speaking to that. You know what, it sounds like to me that, remember you're dealing with a whole human, right? It's, yeah, absolutely. It's not, it's not just a, a robot who comes to work for you, it's a right. whole human being. Right. And in the role of a leader is how can I support you? Yes, how exactly. Can I support you in doing your yeah. best work at whatever place you're at right now. Right, right, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so um, we've talked about quite a lot of things. So I think just for people to kind of bridge, bridge, bring it all together, what strategies would you recommend mm. um, leaders or organizations do to um, help them create that culture that they want? Yeah, so I think... I think the first step is really understanding that we can create a, an environment that's sustainable. We can, we can create, we, so we can do that. So that's the first step. Yeah. But second step then is just let's sit down and let's think about what are those behaviors that really drive our success? I think that's really, really the key. So, so having a process for our culture, having a process and being very intentional with our culture, I think is the first strategy. And, and, and being able to um, um, understand that our culture is gonna drive our success our, and, and it's going to um, be the magnifier of, of, our, of our results. And so we often um, create financial plans, a budget. We also, we, we create sales plans but we don't have a culture plan oftentimes. That's what I've, I've seen in, in my work. And so, so create a culture plan, create that plan that you're going to be very intentional with your culture and you're going to start, you know, start somewhere. And, and, and if it's, if, if nothing else, just create a, uh, I know one of my clients, uh, you know, put together a, a, a committee of, of their senior leaders and, um, and next level leaders to be able to, to do just this, you know, figuring out what are those behaviors? What are the things that are going to drive our success? What would we like to see? Um, but, but it starts with understanding that being very intentional with our culture is going to be the magnifier, the multiplier of our results. Absolutely. Thank you, David. I uh, want to come back to you personally and <laughs> ask you, so you used to feel you said that pool right between mm -hmm. like okay there's my work that's important but there's also my family that's important and i want to participate so yeah. how do you feel now comparing to <laughs> how you felt then <laughs> yeah that's a great question um i really feel um I, I feel really like i'm fully integrated to be honest um and and i i it's not that i i don't have struggles but it, it i feel like i have um a much better much better approach and um i'm i'm able to say no to certain things 
and I'm able to say yes to certain things. And I'm a work in progress, just like everyone. Um, but one of the things I think that's helped me is just to be able to, you, we talked about rituals. And so it's staying focused on my own rituals. And so um, the more I can be um, following my morning ritual, my uh, my startup ritual for my for my work and my shutdown ritual. That's probably more key is for me is the um, shutdown ritual, and and then being able to really go back and integrate with my family. Um, that's been key for me. But yeah, no, I feel like super blessed because um, e even though I know the pandemic has been horrible for a lot of people, not much for me has changed in terms of my work because. I had been doing a lot of my work virtually for a, a long time. And um, th the only thing that did get changed was my Arctic adventure. I, I got up there once last oh, year. That's right. I know, I, I, I just that's happened to think about too. that. <laughs> yeah, but I got, I got up to the Arctic once last year before everything got shut down. And um, I was supposed to go up like six more times and um, that got changed, but 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 for the most part, you know, to answer your question, I mean, I really feel super great that um, I can do what I do virtually. Um, I mean, even even just a couple of years ago, my mom was was um, journeying through cancer, and I was able to continue my business even though I was traveling back um, to the state of Indiana to um, to be with her through while she went through treatments. Uh, I. I had um, coaching calls just like this, and um, so so anyway, I, I feel I feel really great. I, I feel like I'm um, you know fully integrated, and and really um, grateful for the ability to help organizations. So, mm -hmm. so um, <laughs> can you tell me? You said one of the things, one of the rituals that's most important for you to practice is closing your work. Yeah. Yeah. What, tell me about the ritual. What is that ritual? Yeah. So, and I, I, I really, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I learned this from Michael Hyatt. I don't know if you're familiar with Michael Hyatt or not, but uh, Michael Hyatt and Company is uh, an organization that um, I use their, their, their planner. And it's a, it's a paper-based planner called uh, the Full Focus Planner. And so, part of their process, this is where I got it, is having a shutdown ritual. And I think if, if if any of you that are watching, you you work from home, obviously a lot of people work from home. It's so easy, and, and I'm raising my hand here because it's so easy for you to just kind of keep working in your mind, even though, hey, it's dinner time and I need to go to my family. Um, it's, it's so important to be able to have a shutdown ritual. So mine is, um, I first, I, I uh, go through my email and um, uh, take care of any emails that I, uh, that I have in there. Um, finish up on any like social media that I need to like respond to or, or you know, comment on. Um, and then I look at tomorrow and I plan my tomorrow. And so in my planner, I actually, you know, write out what are my appointments. So it kind of gets me, gets me focused on that. Um, and then um, basically then I shut down my, my laptop. And so that's kind of my shutdown ritual. I just kind of go through a few things that help me close out this day focus on next day. Oh, I did actually forgot. A, I forgot a point. So one of the things that's part of this process is focusing on only three big things or three big tasks. And so I, I basically look at my um, three, uh, they, they are, they're called the big three. So the big three uh, for the week, and I look at what hasn't gotten done. So I plan out my big three for tomorrow. That's part of the, the shutdown process as well. But that's really helped me to be able to um, kind of close out my day and, and really shift into um, being present, you know, for my family at, you know, at dinner time and then in the evening time. So. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. Yes. Before we close out, please tell me about the Arctic journey. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I was really um, blessed to be able to have this uh, opportunity, but uh, there's an organization that uh, is a mining company and it's, it's, it's mining, um, uh, in the Arctic Circle, and they also needed to train their leaders. And so um, it was something that really, quite frankly, got me outside of my comfort zone. And um, I'd never been to the Arctic Circle before. And um, it was, a, it was uh, a, a, an organization that really needed to be able to train their leaders because um, these leaders were doing um, work that was really dangerous. So there was some safety elements to it as well. So I was able to go up and, and help train some leaders uh, on safety leadership, 
um, personal leadership and, and really what is that and, and having leadership conversations. And um, gosh, it was so fun and, and, and so, but I have never, like, I've never experienced cold like that before. I think it was minus 40 um, was the low Fahrenheit. And then the high was like minus 32. So it didn't <laughs> fluctuate much. I, my, I give you a quick story. So I got off the airplane and I was walking and you, you, there's no jet bridge. I mean, you walk off the airplane and you go then into the, um, you know, the, the terminal. And by the time I got down the, sta the stairs from the, the, um, the airplane and I started walking, I looked at um, the partner that I was with, I was with a, a, a colleague and I looked over and my, my eyelashes started freezing and my contact lenses started freezing to my eyes. It was so cold. Like I, I couldn't <laughs> breathe too. It's like, so you breathe in, you breathe in, you know, minus 40 degree air. It's, you're like, <laughs> so anyway, it was, it was an experience. It, it, it totally got me outside of my comfort zone um, because I mean, it was like a very uh, rugged environment, um, but it was so cool though. So cool. Wow. I have massive respect for the, the, the individuals that are up there all the time, you know, in the, those elements. Um, and, and frankly, as we're recording this, like right now, it's total dark up there. So it's, it's total dark. And um, when I was up there, it was February of last year and there was very little sunlight. I think the sun rose at maybe like 10 AM and then sunset at like 3 PM. So it was really a short, short day, but um, quite an experience, quite an experience. And, and um, I, I'm hoping that later this year we'll get a chance to get back up there and, and continue the training because it was supposed to be a series. And so hopefully uh, in 2021, we'll get a chance to get back up there. Yes, I'm, I hope so too. Maybe one day we'll get there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, um, you know, sharing so many cool things with us. Yeah. So, so I hope, yeah, I hope they're helpful. Oh, absolutely. Um, so if people want to connect with you or find you, work with you, how can sure. they do that? Yeah, best place to catch me is on LinkedIn. Um, I that's kind of my social media platform of choice. Uh, you can you know, connect with me uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, I also do have a website, davidmcglennon.com. Um, you can see a few things uh, that I'm doing there. Uh, but LinkedIn is probably the best place to catch me. That's okay. Great. Well, David, it's been so fun. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thanks for th thanks for the invitation to be a part of the summit. Uh, can't wait to to actually hear some of the other speakers as well. I'm I'm really honored to be here. Yes, absolutely. Okay, great, everyone. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.